Hey guys, it's the guy with the bow tie checking with you live with Randy Cooper to my right on another edition of Business with Benefits. Um, you can see Randy's already for St. Patrick's Day. Got the hat going. Already ready. <laughs> I tried looking for a green bow tie, but I don't think I have one or didn't have enough green to show on camera. So I just went with this. But um, we are in the middle of the coronavirus nonsense going on here. So all of you have been on LinkedIn probably more than normal. Um, which is totally fine, but we're going to talk today about content. Uh, Randy and I met at LinkedIn Meetup ATL. That was in October, right? October last year? Uh, November. November. November, okay. November. Um, we've been connected before, but I, we actually got to meet in person. And ever since then, we kind of lock in step with uh, sharing each other's content, liking each other's content. So when I thought about this, there's nobody better out there that I think that understands content for the audience. So kind of share with people why you're the person to listen to or what you know about content so they get some um, context of why to listen to you. Well, one of the things is, is that uh, I come from a programming background, so I'm very analytical and I like figuring out how things work. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole algorithm thing intrigued me. And if you've never read the book um, uh, by Monty Clark about LinkedIn, okay. It's fantastic. It goes into some real depth about the algorithm and specifically how different content types can be favored. Okay. Um, the thing is, is that those content type, the, the favoritism changes. It's like playing uh, <laughs> cards with your brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rules keep changing depending on what they want to promote. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't so long ago, uh, LinkedIn was really dying for video content. And they yep. wanted everybody to produce video. So if you put a video out, it was, a, 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 you know, had favoritism. It was elevated to the next level very easily in terms of uh, engagement. Um, okay. Because when the post is first put out, there's a quality score that they try to figure out within one to two hours. And okay. most of that is done by the engagement on the post. How many reactions, how many views, um, uh, how many comments and the mm -hmm. comments are very important because now I, I just heard, and if you haven't ever heard of this guy, Mark Williams, LinkedIn informed podcast, he comes out every Saturday and he's fantastic. The, the number of stuff that he gets into and, and it's really quite technical. Um, mm -hmm. so some people may be very bored with it quickly. Um, but it is really, really interesting if you can, uh, grasp what he's talking about um, okay. because he talks a lot about um, in this past, it was about relevancy and how that affects the algorithm. And when we speak of the algorithm, we're talking about the display algorithm, not the, yes. not the search algorithm. So this right. is the display algorithm that determines what kind of content goes into somebody's feed. Yep. Um, so, you know, I think that, you know, Probably the best place to start when we start talking about content is the five types of content. All right, so let's pause for you, jump that I want to check in with the audience real quick. We had uh, okay. Tareen Ferguson said, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Carlotta, old road dog for us. Hey. Happy St. Patrick's Day to my faves. <laughs> Stacy DeMarco, Randy took my slot. Uh, <laughs> Stacy was supposed to come on. We had to readjust a couple of things, so you did get her slot. Uh, uh, thanks, Stacy. I owe you one. <laughs> Uh, Marek said, hola. I guess he's in Spain somewhere. Hola. Habla español hola. también. Marcello, he's a great cheerleader for LinkedIn Meetup yeah. ATL. He sent me a video. Marcello, I didn't get to watch your video yet. I literally had Randy on hold for 15, 20 minutes before I got to do this. So I didn't watch the video, but I will watch it as soon as we get done with this. Um, sure, so yeah, the, there, you know I was going to be on time. <laughs> yep. I start right on time. So right now, the types of content. So this is a issue that I think a lot of people have at LinkedIn. Um, they get this fear of, oh, my gosh, I got to make content. I don't know what to do. But there's five types. So yeah. kind of hit so the, for the audience, the five types. The first type of content is curated content. And um, uh, curated content, this is something that you didn't make. You didn't create. You're just getting a link. You're thinking it's, you know, some something of value that you want to share with your network. And that's great, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, this is kind of the aggregator approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be your Flipboard uh, for LinkedIn, basically. <laughs> if you're familiar with Flipboard, awesome product. Yep. Um, now, um, 
the bad thing about that is that typically those links redirect off platform. Yes. Not favored by the platform because you know they're losing somebody. Yeah. I and think people forget I that because people all get a big rap doing that. There's some people that their audience was built on sharing videos and links. So I think a lot of people think I should just do that over and over again. Right. Well, it's the easy way out, you know, yeah. because you don't have to really write content. All that you have to do is understand what your readers are looking for mm -hmm. and, and then do a Google alert for it. And it'll find it out there on Forbes or, you know, some other very reputable source. So, you know, your credibility isn't, you know, damaged in any way by some crazy uh, link. Um, right. <laughs> the other is um, the next content type is text. And that, as simple as it is, it continues to be very popular. Absolutely. Uh, images are probably um, the best compromise when it comes to visual and text. Um, because you can have a very graphically appealing image and mm -hmm. have that capture that scroller's attention, and then mm -hmm. they start reading. Yeah. And then, you know, those first three lines are critical uh, because yeah. if they haven't hit a comment or anything, everything else past those three lines are hidden there. You know, you have to hit the ellipse in order to, to read more. Yep. And um, uh, so... Th those first three lines are very critical. And you'll notice I waste a bunch of uh, space doing things like emojis and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that in mind because I want those words to be caught by the reader's eye. Yeah. I want color, you know, to bring that in. And I want to make things engaging and fun. Mm -hmm. um, the other kind of uh, post that I really, really like is the document post. Yes, and those do very well, actually. I create these in uh, in PowerPoint yep. and generally use the same stock PowerPoint templates that come with it. Mm -hmm. And I think they do a great job. I, I've done all kind of different sizes in there and yep. it's just easy to go into page setup. And, and if uh, you know, you're doing like a square post, you just put in six inches by six inches. Or if you want to do a vertical post, I put in uh, uh, six inches by 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's another topic, too, is the whole vertical content issue. Um, yeah. And I think that we're going to see a greater proliferation of vertical content mm -hmm. once stories start coming into uh, LinkedIn. And if you hadn't heard over the last two weeks, um, and this was just before the, all the CV stuff hit. So yeah. um, uh, everything else since then has kind of been a blur. But uh, just before all that hit, we were talking about stories on LinkedIn. And, you know, my first thought was, well, great, that's original. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, it's just another me too. Right. And, you know, how are they going to make stories relevant in, in a business format? Yeah, I'm having mm -hmm. a hard time with that piece of content because Snapchat and those things have always been to me like, what's the point if it goes away after X amount of hours? So that, that one I'm grappling with. But when you mentioned the, the three lines, I think people need to understand the three lines real quick with the post. Um, sure. Length and favors, I want to say it's three seconds for viewing something, correct? Oh, you mean in, that's on a video. Okay, so for documents and text posts, the view algorithm, like how is the view weighted or how is it scored? Is it opening it? Is it just stopping and looking at it for a second? Just stopping it? and looking at it. That's what I think. Okay, so there's no yeah. set time. I mean, obviously, all of this is a guess, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and 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 that's why I say, you know, the uh, that Mark Williams podcast mm -hmm. that is a wealth of information, dude. You will yep. find out so much stuff, and and the technical side of it too, and and um, you know, these guys are under NDA with mm -hmm. uh, with LinkedIn, so they they know how to say stuff and not say it. Right. <laughs> so sometimes you have to kind of listen between the lines on those. Mm -hmm. um, but but those the three lines that we're referring to is that when a post is first displayed in your feed, it's not opened up. Right. Uh, so the entire thing you can't see uh, when it's in an unread state. And it's kind of compact like that. So you can fit more on that page in that stream. You can mm -hmm. fit more articles or posts in that, in that stream. Mm -hmm. And 
then once you like it or uh, hit comment, then all of a sudden it'll expand and you can see that. Right. Um, so those first three lines, those are really important when it comes to, uh, you know, capturing that reader's attention. And mm. I, I don't, I'm not taught when I speak of that, I don't mean, you know, baiting. You know, right. not, it, this isn't a, you know, a, a, a bait and switch thing. Right. What we're trying to do is just explain what's going on um, and have it be somewhat compelling. Yeah, I think your first three lines are just your, your strongest value property. Your strongest line needs to be the first three because I find myself writing a post and then I'll go back and say, well, how strong are the first three lines? Because I might have a real big point, but it's kind of like any good speech if the opening isn't good. Yeah. The whole speech kind of fell apart. So people is not baiting. It's definitely just making sure that your audience is going to stay around to get the rest of it. Because that's a oh, yeah. big battle, I think, for content. And I think text, that's what does so good. Because text is like six lines, I think, for text, isn't it? For a text post? Um, I know it's more. I forgot how many lines you, you mean. Yeah, when, yeah. You write, when you write an all text post, it shows a lot yeah. more lines than an image. Yeah. So definitely um, mix it up. And then um, video is the fifth uh, content type. Okay. And I think you remember a couple of weeks ago, I was really on a rant because <laughs> I did these uh, these four video posts mm. and, you know, I ended up getting like 25% of the views uh, mm. all week long, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. And um, uh, I'm sitting there going like, you know, normally videos do a whole lot better. Yeah. And then I start asking around. I go, in there, hey, how are your videos uh, views doing eh, down? And then I find out it's not just me. It's everybody. Yeah. I know so, something I do uh, kind of play with videos that that first millisecond. And this this is for the geeks of doing this. If you can get your first millisecond thumbnail of something uh, eye catching. I've kind of gotten away from this. But we all know like Shay Robottom is famous for this. That the at the image of the first video is going to be like something like her in an office slamming somebody on the ground or something like that. So if you get technical, yeah. that's probably what's taken over. I think on LinkedIn, like if you just have just yourself, I think it doesn't do as well to be like a funny or a uh, thought provoking image for the first millisecond. Personally. Right so the structure of a post, let's, we were going to talk about that with people. So let's talk about documents. I think documents, the little untalked about secret for LinkedIn. So you talked about the sizing of it. Right. Um, what do you find is the best content that you're seeing the most engagement for? Because views is one thing. But when you're making these documents, what do you think is the most engaging content you're doing for that? Is it FAQs? Is it how to? What would you say is the best one for that for people? I got to <laughs> Stella. Got a co got a co-host. This is this is Stella. <laughs> <laughs> she has a way of jumping right into things. Lord. Um, she wants to be the center of attention. I, I think that probably documents and the image are tied when it comes to um, uh, overall view views. Okay. Um, and again, you know, I mean, here's the thing: is is that I I think. The holy grail is engagement. I don't yeah. care if I get four times as many views. I mm -hmm. kind of look at a at views to engagement mm -hmm. and and look at that percentage. Have you ever checked out Shield? Yeah, Marissa Kelly told me about that. I haven't dug too deep into it, but she and shout out Marissa Kelly. She taught me about Shield some months ago. Um, uh, Ron L. Richards did a uh, a little segment on it on one of his pieces of content. And I looked at it, checked it out, immediately signed up. Okay. <laughs> um, this thing is really, really great when it comes to understanding what your LinkedIn content is doing. Okay. And um, I think it's like 20 bucks a month or something like that. Um, but it, it's really well worth it. And the, the stuff that you get out of it um, and seeing that engagement grow, and it breaks it down for you really well. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, that would definitely be something that I encourage people. You know, if you're a content creator, you need Shield because that'll really help you understand what's resonating with your users mm -hmm. and, um, and what days of the week are best for you. 
What I meant to bring you to an interesting point, you said content creator. So we're in the middle of social distancing. Nobody wants to be around anybody. Right. So you and I kind of joked about these content wars. So what's kind of a trend you see for people that aren't making content? What do you see is like the reason why they should now? Well, I mean, here's the thing is, is that I think that people should want to come on LinkedIn and w we want we want your voice. Mm -hmm. you know, we want to know what's going on. We want to know what your years of experience have taught you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to we want you to share what you have. And everybody has a unique thing that they bring. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't necessarily always have to be that. Sometimes it's a very interesting personality. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some really <laughs> interesting personalities on LinkedIn. There are. Um, but I, I think it's cool when uh, people create content. The thing is, is that you have to create content that's compelling, that people want to watch, that it's fun to watch, and yeah. that, the, that the viewer enjoys watching. When you can do that, then you're really creating content. I mean, then it becomes like television. Yeah. And uh, I, I find myself getting like CNN with these banners and stuff and everything on StreamYard, having to type stuff and change things. So it's definitely... Yeah. This is the most like I was thinking about this with the last debate. They did debates with no audience. Um, and that's different because you don't have that engagement that you hear the clapping and the cheering and all that. But I thought about it, that platforms like this will be the new audience a lot of the time because you have the emojis and the likes and the people saying things and comments. So I think that's going to be a trend, at least for the next few weeks. So if somebody's watching this, you're like, hey, I'm, I've been on LinkedIn. I don't make content or I don't know how to. What do you think is probably the least path of resistance for them to start making content right now? Obviously, I think that the the curated content, you know, just sharing what other people create and and exposing your network to that. Mm -hmm. you know, if if that's what you can do, do that. Mm -hmm. You know, get started doing that. And at least in that description, when you go to share it, add value somehow. You know, tell tell people what you thought about it. And ask them for their input, their feedback, and mm -hmm. and get a conversation going, because that's really all engagement's about. It's just about having a conversation. Yeah, and Marissa Cowley, just I gave her a shout out. She jumped in. She said, "Create content, not well, hashtag create content, not panic." <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're all worried about social distancing and people sneezing. Create content, don't panic. But she said. Oh, um, awesome. She said, what do you say to someone who hasn't created anything yet? So they may be curating content, but they haven't made a single piece of content yet. So what do you say to that person? Here's what you need to create content. You need a moleskin notebook. You got to get one, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you have ideas, start writing them down. Yeah. And that's what I do. I just keep writing ideas down. And all this yep. is content. Everything in this book is content that I've I've just sat down and you know. And I'm probably I bet you probably shared every single thing you wrote down. I'm sure you wrote some stuff and looked back later was like, eh, maybe not that one, but absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> at least you had something. It's like you at least start somewhere. Yeah, I'm not known for having a filter, but I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> But that was good. I think I think this word like for me with LinkedIn Live. So I had LinkedIn Live for a month before I used it because I was just terrified of like, what am I gonna say when I'm live? And I thought about it, well, it's just a conversation, just like if I was in person. But then I was thinking, okay, share is value with people. I can be valuable and share some value with people. So some industries aren't so much attractive and fun. I mean, you and I both are B2B. B2B mm -hmm. isn't always like exciting. So over yeah, the I, of time. I mean, I got, I got customers that do waterproofing. Okay, <laughs> right. you know how exciting uh, talking about waterproofing your basement is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not you know quite at all. You know how many times people lay awake at night and go like, "Hmm, what should I do with that extra ten G's?" Right. I got a great idea. <laughs> right. Get out the basement, <laughs> and then we'll fix it, and then we'll pay these dudes ten G's. Yeah, that sounds like a great way to spend that ten grand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs>
but how did you kind of come over the hump of like okay B two B sales? Okay, it's it's the same old same old. How did you kind of what made you decide years ago to start kind of doing more content? What was that aha moment for you? Um, I think. Well, here's the thing: is I started out in online communities back in probably it was uh, eighty nine. Uh, this okay. was pre internet. This is bulletin boards. Yep. Uh, running the Sysop program for Hayes Microcomputer Products, mm-hmm. and um, uh, it's about an online community. You're just building mm-hmm. an online community. It's the same thing here. You know, now the buzzword is tribe. You know, I yes. need to build my tribe. And, um, uh, you know, the, that whole community, that that's where it's at for me. Mm-hmm. It, that, um, and, you know, when we talk about, you know, who that who that community is, who are those people that you connect with, those relationships that you make on LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, there's prospects and customers, but. Mm-hmm there's also collaborators, you know, yep. people like you and I, you know, yep. where we have, um, you know, no other agenda other than to help one another. Right. And, you know, Hey, if I find something out, that's really cool. One of the first thoughts in my mind is I really need to tell Daryl about that. He would mm-hmm. dig learn about that. Yep. Um, and there's also, you know, I think one of the most beneficial relationships you can have on LinkedIn are what I call rock star relationships Mm -hmm. where you kind of um, have somehow caught the eye of one of the LinkedIn celebrities. Yeah. They kind of dig you. Mm -hmm. That's really a cool relationship, you know, that they help promote you. And it's kind of like having a sponsor on hunger game. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna probably talk about this for the home via the parachute, you know. <laughs> I'll probably talk about this forever, but just the I'm so thankful with Shanae Moran and Courtney Herring. I mean, meeting yeah. them, they bullied me into that event. So I mean, just having their support and there's really when I met them, I just said, "Hey, y'all are doing cool stuff on LinkedIn. I just want to meet you and have coffee." It wasn't like a a sales pitch. It was literally just, "I see you're crushing it on here. Let's just meet." And I think you're right that that makes the magic. And there's a relationship that doesn't have to get something out of it. There's no, you know, there's no gain. It's just we just like each other. I think mean, the best right. thing, like you said. Um, well, a couple of check-in things that uh, Marissa said she had to go real quick, but she said, write it down, take a pic. There you go. You created content. So just write stuff down. <laughs> take a picture of something. That, that was my beginning content. I actually was just taking pictures of me at the office or me leaving a meeting or something like that. So that's definitely, I think, with my go-to content but for industries that are heavily regulated like you know b2b some businesses are heavily regulated can't do a whole lot um what do you say to those people like what's kind of their in what's their their way to get content out there that maybe isn't about their work but still makes them relevant on linkedin um explain the regulation and how that would affect them from uh from creating content well, sometimes like in insurance, some of them saying, oh, they want to talk about product. So they can't share a product on LinkedIn because it's specific to a product. And that's kind of their crutch. Like, well, that's what I do. Or uh, they want to share a, a certain client they work with. And there's an NDA. They can't share that because it's a certain client. So things like that where they can't give the full detail, but that's what they feel like is most valuable for their audience. I really kind of stay away from and from product or service related content anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm kind of fortunate because, you know, um, uh, you know, what I consult in the area that I consult in is what we talk about all the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, the only thing that, you know, from my, from my perspective is just to be uh, perceived as a subject matter expert. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of that is, you know, will find its way. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think the difficult thing is, is, uh, and this is where I I believe that you're going with the question is how do you make things interesting that aren't real interesting or that you really can't quote talk about? Yeah. Okay. And 
that's that's the job of of marketers. That's why we call it marketing, yeah. is because we're trying to make something interesting that isn't. And mm -hmm. you know, how do you get people to buy a basement waterproofing? How do you get people <laughs> yeah. to buy a set of tires? Mm -hmm. um, how do you get people to buy things that you know that they need? Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's the last thing anybody wants to spend their money on. Yep. Um. So, um, uh, that's a difficult, that's a difficult thing to do. So, mm -hmm. and I think I, one of the examples that I had on this was, uh, I have a, uh, customer who does scientific equipment. Okay. Really boring stuff. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. But science, science isn't boring. Right. Science is really cool. Science is very interesting. So there's a lot of things that we can do to um, to create posts around general science. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's some other creative things that that we can do also. Um, yep. You know, there are people who can create cartoons. Yeah, that's an option, too. You know, you can you can do cartoons. You can do uh, you know the easiest thing is just to do videos, and you yeah. know talk about those things. Um, uh, I think the easier ones are you know the uh, the travel planners and things like that that can show you these you know fantastic exclusive getaways and all kind of things. That's easy. Um, I think they found the secret you know, too. When you get into these B two B issues where things aren't as, I mean, I'm not selling iPhones. Right. It's not something that's desirable, but it's something that solves a business problem. And, and, and how do you um, find the people that have that problem? Well, I think you brought up a good point. You mentioned traveling and iPhone. It's really, they're not selling the product. They're kind of selling the end result. And I think that's, mm -hmm. gonna, that's sales one-on-one, but I think for some reason, when we come to making content, like realtors, for example, I think realtors mess this up all the time. They just show a house. It is right. house listed. And like, no, don't show the house it's listed. Show that they built wealth out of this, or this is their mom's first home, or this is the first time, you know, things that are an impact, not just the product. I think that's where people mess it up. They want to show product, product, product. But if you think about the best companies, like Geico doesn't talk about insurance all the time, or, uh, you know, Tied to funny commercials about people making stains on their clothes. So I think if we kind of understand that content is showing the end result, not the product. But oh, check in real quick. Um, Jennifer Siller said, absolutely love this live broadcast. Thank you so much. Looks like Marcello turned her on to it. Deborah Wallace, we supposed to be at length and meet at ATL, but we had to change things, unfortunately. But uh, Deborah Wallace said, relationships do matter. After connecting, set up a call, have a conversation get to know each other on a human level. And Randy, that was our first live. I think it was the, uh, instead of B2B, it's human to human. Yeah, um, yeah, I think you're right. For your content, so, you, you know, you're putting stuff out there. Talk about engagement. Like, what is engagement to you? Are you uh, messaging people that like your content? Or are you just commenting on the line? What, what's your strategy for engagement with your posts? Well, that's a great question because I am... Uh... I'm probably nutso over engagement <laughs> more than most people. Okay. And um, I had a guy come up to me. Uh, I spoke at a conference about two weeks ago and the guy comes up and says, gosh, what are you doing to get that <laughs> engagement? Every time I go to one of your posts, it's like there's some party going on in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what I think that a post should be mm -hmm. is you have a party going on. And okay. I like to have, um, you know, we may have a couple of, of threads going on the topic and yep. we'll probably have more than that going on way off topic about football <laughs> or baseball or, you know, uh, hiking last weekend or yep. whatever. Um, but you know, I, I want that post to be my home for the day. Okay. And for, for me to welcome guests in and, you know, one of the things that I always do is I always try to uh, do at mentions for all of my recent connections within the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And 
it's a pain in the jeans, man, because there is no, you know, magic wand where you can name, you know, wave the, Oh, I'm just going to throw in all the ones on the last 20. No, you got to type them all in. And it's probably the biggest drag of my morning, but when I get it done, I'm so happy. And hey, I, I'm I get, with you. <laughs> even a half a dozen of those people that say, hey, I really appreciate you tagging me. I've never had anybody say anything negative uh, yeah. about being tagged like that. Um, because I mean, all I'm doing is thanking them. And, um, you know, it gets people pulled back in because obviously they connected you within the last 24 hours. They mm -hmm. saw yesterday's post. That's yep. what made them say, hey, I want to connect with Randy. And now that they have, I want to make sure, okay, here's, here's your second spoonful. Yeah. And, and, um, and thank them. You know, I, that's the other thing about engagement and it blows my mind about how many people, uh, I say people, but I mean companies mm -hmm. that spend money developing content, going through, through the approval process on content mm -hmm. and then publishing that content and then put it out there like a plant with no water. Oh yeah, there's no liking any comments. There's and no replies. there's no interaction whatsoever. Every time you click on it, it says, be the first to comment. Yep. Who is going to be the first to comment? That's like the first couple going out on the dance floor. Nobody wants to be those guys. Yep. So you have to make it easy. And part of that way that I make it easy is to put that out there by, you know, having the first comment be thank you to my recent connections. Mm -hmm. Generally, I'll have another seed um, engagement um, by speaking about something in the subject. I might ask a question, you know, hey, you know, what do you think about that? Yep. That's an alternative viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, here's the thing is, is that I'm my whole thing is centered around what is called a substantive comment. And okay. that's not something that I made up. I learned that in school. Because um, the way to prove your work was is that you had to go into this forum and, uh, you know, people would post like two or three paragraphs on the subject matter. And then mm -hmm. you had to comment on three of those. OK, well, sometimes it's really difficult to figure out what am I going to say? That's, you know, three sentences about this guy's thing when he clearly didn't understand the subject. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to get creative and, and um, you know, I'm a talker anyway. So I never have a problem striking up a conversation. The only thing is taking it down. My wife is over here giving me the big thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, my thing is putting it into the keyboard. Yeah. And I think too many people are in a hurry when it comes to engagement on LinkedIn. And the mm -hmm. reason why I say that is, you know, we're into these very short snippets. Yep. Great post. Nice share. Yep. Good work. Inspirational. Motivating. You know, and it's kind of like these grunts. You know, mm -hmm. if I came up to you and, and, I wanted to have a conversation and your reply was one word and then you walked off. How would that make me feel? <laughs> That's a good analogy. Cause I think what happened was they read an article that said, Hey, comment. And they just took that short piece of, okay, if I just comment, at least I did the effort of doing commenting. But right. I, I see the same thing for you with engagement. Like for a long time I had connections with no engagement. Mm -hmm. And for the last month or two, I send a voice message to every new connection. And today, like, it's been a drag because I think I had, like, a bunch I didn't get to do yesterday because of all the coronavirus nonsense. Mm -hmm. So I'll literally send probably 20 to 40 voice messages a day, whether they're new connections, a birthday, um, a job rule change. And you're right. It is a time suck. But at the end of the day, people say, oh, my gosh, I never knew LinkedIn had voice messages. You're mm -hmm. my first, or they'll reply back and they, they ask a question. They say, like, thank you. And I'm like, did you listen to the voice message? They're like, oh, that's what that was? I thought it was just a, a mess up. You said, like, a picture. Like, no, that's the recording. So I'll ask a question, like, you know, what do you find valuable on LinkedIn or what's a project you're working on? Just to make a real conversation. And it's been nothing but positive. I've never had somebody upset about it. But I think you're right. We're all microwave now. 
just comment because some article on Forbes said the key to engagement on LinkedIn is commenting. But have you seen a big bump in your engagement with your parties you're doing? Like, have you seen since now to last year? Have you seen a big jump in your engagement? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, I was just in Shield running a report and looking at uh, the previous month's uh, engagement versus the month before. And mm -hmm. I am right on track. So, I mean, I continue to see, you know, 20 and 30 percent increases in engagement. Um, but, you know, my views are going up, too. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's great to see that growth. And and again, Shield is Shield is an awesome thing. So big shout out to Ron L. Richards on that one. I gave him a little tag earlier and then Kenyatta just jumped in. We interviewed Kenyatta yesterday. She said, uh, you taught me something new, LOL, about the voice message. I think I sent Kenyatta a voice message and it was her first time, too. And honestly, when I first saw voice messages, you know, the birthday thing on LinkedIn, it shows that picture of the microphone on your phone. Yeah, yeah. I, and I was always like, nah, I'm not doing that. That's just weird. And <laughs> literally people I would never have gotten a conversation with are like, oh my gosh, thank you. Nobody even said happy birthday to me, like besides the the standard blanketed Facebook. Happy birthday, everybody let that just button. You yeah, push. yeah. So I think it's about being different content to me um, is you just have fun with it. LinkedIn doesn't have to be a stuffy place. Um, I mean, if you look at the best content you probably consume on LinkedIn, probably it's entertaining in some regard. So we're in the content wars now. It's going to be a content thing for the next couple of weeks, probably. So if you want to leave like a takeaway for people that are looking to stand out um, in some regard, would you say they want to do one time a day for content or two? What do you think is the, the good number? Considering I mean, if you're just getting started, I would just do one. OK, um, because you don't want that second post to detract from the first. Um, mm -hmm. I always give a four hour window in between. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of what I've heard suggested. Um, the, and, you know, back to the engagement thing and how to be different. I like to do put, I like to add pictures. to Yes, I like when you do my, that. A lot of my comments. And I love that. I wish they would allow you to do video comments. Mm -hmm. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I think the whole thing is, is just be you, be different. And you've got to be different because you're you. Yep. There's only one of you. So That's cliche, but it's true. <laughs> Here, Stella. Say goodbye. Bye, Stella. <laughs> oh, and we had um, Siobhan. Siobhan was somebody I voice message. She said, me too. That was, that was her first voice message. Um, That's awesome. So and that's, that's, you know, what's funny about that. I think I, I first heard Sherry Drew and said, like, I love me some voice messages. That's how she does. Yeah, Sherry sure, uh, sure does it all the time. It, it took me a while to, to get used to that. Um, mm -hmm. But I I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the video message, too. Yeah, that's um, great, too. I understand the voice message. I, I just hate having to hold it. <laughs> but see, that's a different piece of content. I think people don't understand that that messaging is a type of content. I, I, yeah. I want to add add to your number number six. Um, I think messaging is a missed content because I'll literally sometimes go in and message people that like something, say thank you so much for liking it. You didn't have to do it, but I appreciate it. Hey, and, you know that's a great idea. You should make it a six content and then have it be like a um, an audio file. Yeah, it's something. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah, just I, it, it drives me crazy. Three, and you can you could post a podcast or a fifteen second you know message, whatever. Yeah, because it humanizes it. I, it. We see these people I mass producing that. stuff. So at least yeah. these these things you're mentioning, take a picture of yourself, put a video of yourself. That's you can't duplicate that. That has to be you. So um, what, before we leave everybody with the audience, I want you to kind of share about Buzz My Biz. Kind of share what it is the the key thing. I know you mentioned coaching, but kind of share for the audience. What's like your ideal client or who you're trying to impact with your work? Um, so Buzz My Biz started 11 years ago, uh, basically doing web development mm -hmm. and um, focusing on mobile applications and search engine optimization. Um, somewhere along the line, I got the education bug and uh, was much more interested in advancing my education than advancing my business. Okay. And, um, so I kind of backed off of the business as my uh, my edu the need 
then the hours for my education increased. So once I got done with school, I said, you know, hey, I really want to, you know, look at a different business model. Okay. And I started looking more at social media. And uh, so right now, what I'm focused on is LinkedIn profile management okay. uh, for um, executive leadership and busy professionals and uh, sales navigator coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I come from a sales and marketing background for more than 30 years in IT and, you know, all these um, uh, different aspects of uh, technology and sales navigator is like the biggest turn on for me. Um, because every, every other CRM that you get, you get it empty, you know, with LinkedIn, mm -hmm. True. You, you, you basically have the power of LinkedIn at your disposal, mm -hmm. uh, but there's elements of it that make it very strategic too, because, um, you know, you can only really reach out to your first, second degree connections. Uh, mm -hmm. so it's, it's very important while you're growing your connections that you grow those connections strategically and then um, uh, engage with them strategically uh, so that, you know, you're building relationships just as okay. you do offline. Okay. And a quick check in. Um, Kenyatta said, I think Doug Lehman did video when we first connected. Doug Lehman is definitely the man for. Yeah. Doug, video will, video. Doug, Doug will send you a video. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And then Jajron Stewart said, messaging is a great content. Good point. And Donovan, we met Donovan at LinkedIn Meetup ATL with yeah. the first Meridian. I love when he does right. videos. <laughs> and that's a good example of making something, you know, math tutoring isn't always the most exciting thing in the world, but he makes it super fun. He makes it fun. He yep. makes it fun. Yeah. So right now, what I want to kind of stress to people, you know, stay safe out there, obviously, um, you know, if you don't have to be around people, don't don't if you don't have to. But at the same time, LinkedIn is the most positive social media out there. So if you want to kind of stay up on positive things, you'll always find something upbeat and happy on LinkedIn. But at the same time, you can learn and gain education. So for the people that, you know, only come on here for resumes, only come on here for job searching, um, what's your plug for them for the next two weeks? Watch and observe. <laughs> there you go. Stay online. Stay online. Consume content. Engage. You know, I mean, uh, it doesn't cost you anything to to put a comment down there and say, "Hey, I really like that video, and here's why." Yeah. And I you think know, it's easy to say, "Yeah, I like something," but it, it doesn't provide any value to the content creator unless we know why you liked it. What resonated with you about that? Tell me about mm -hmm. that. Then we have a conversation going. Yep. Well, I'm going to end it there and then lengthen meetup ATL is postponed until we figure out which hotels are open. Um, oh, last two things or last three things. Kenyatta said, yes, I told you sales navigator. She's a big proponent of sales navigator. Um, Donovan said, absolutely. About the post Meridian. And Jejuan said, how do you connect to LinkedIn Live? Now, Jejuan, that is a application process. I wish I could tell you why they chose me. Um, only around 2,000 people have LinkedIn live access. So that's why I interview people to share the content because a lot of people can't do it. So um, just Google LinkedIn live application. You can apply for it, but LinkedIn, I think, doesn't want to saturate it. So they're trying to have a certain number of people. That's why I have Randy in here because Randy's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> But that ends another episode of Business of Benefits. Please follow Randy. Get with his profile. He has tons of content out there, and it's always engaging. I learn from his documents all the time. So definitely connect with Randy, and then we will see you guys on the next time. Y'all have fun out there. Happy St.